In today's video, my sons and daughters, we are going to talk about the DV Lottery 2025. This video is going to be long because we'll talk about the dates, the requirements, what would make you ineligible as the children, and of course, I'll show you step by step on how to make the application uh, by yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to Accord TV. If you're checking in for the very first time, it's your mama Accord and yes, 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 I am the immigration queen. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our content. Now in today's video, my sons and daughters, like mentioned in the beginning of this video, we are going to talk about the DV 2025. Okay, so the thing is, this thing is actually open. This video is coming late, but your mama has been, was, Still is a little bit under the weather. The weather is changing and it's it's weathering with me in it, you know. But this thing is already open. The system is already open. You can make your application if you're ready. If you have not, make sure you watch this video from here all the way to the end. So you do not make no unnecessary mistakes, okay? So when you hear my voice, my noise, I'm telling you. But this video just has to happen. If I had to wait for another two days, it was going to be like too long. And I know some of you are ready to make the applications. So today marks day two hmm, since the system opened. So we are good. We are good. So the date, it opened yesterday, which was the 4th of October. And it's going to run up until the 7th of November, 2023. Should you happen to win? But again, I know. Anyone watching this video is a winner. Just be patient, watch it to the end and do the right thing. 2025. You will tell me where exactly should I come for coffee? Which state in the United States of America? The requirements are pretty simple. You just need to have completed high school. You know, the best thing about America is that the education is very important when you're in the country because if you want to get a reasonable job, a well-paying job, a professional job, they need you to have some certification for you to get those jobs. Otherwise, if you're a high schooler, hmm, diploma, you, you don't stress so much about education and everything. You can still do caregiver jobs and make a lot of money. A lot. And invest and then just live a good life. The best thing about America is that everyone has an opportunity to make a fortune. So it depends on how willing are you really to work for that fortune. Okay? So it is simple. They are saying anyone who wants to come into our country, we just need you to have a high school diploma or a high school certificate i don't know how you call it in your country but for me we call it high school certificate okay that's all you need and if it happens that you did not finish high school no problem america says still you are welcome all you need to have is two years of work experience or at least you're working in a job which requires you to have had experience for two years before you actually qualify to work in that job so what are we saying High school certificate and two years of work experience. Now, what would make you ineligible? Because not everybody who applies for a green card, eh? not everybody who enters the lottery actually wins. And those who win still get disqualified at some point. And now those are the things you want to tackle. You want to make sure that you make your application the right way. And then in the same spirit, once you are declared a winner, because you are going to be in Jesus' name, you are a winner. 2025. Once you're declared a winner, you know how to go about it. Follow through with the paperwork. Don't go shouting the way you are. Evil eye is real. Follow up with the process and then get you a visa. Get into the United States. Find a place to live. Get a job. Settle. And then take a picture and share with your family that indeed God is good. So one of the things that would make you ineligible for the DV program, for the green card, for the lottery program, is if you become malicious and submit your application twice or three times. You're thinking, ah, since there are so many people applying around the world, I can as well submit this thing five times. These people, they're going to know who I am. So you submit one, you submit two, three, and then wait to win. Your thing will be cancelled. You'll never hear from anybody. Don't even bother when the results are announced that you go into the system to check. and Nothing. So forget about it. Okay, so you only are required to make a submission once. Submit once. You will be expected to state whether you are married or you are single. If you say you are married, whoever you add onto your application should be your legal wife or your legal husband. Some of us attempted to say I'm married. And then you just take somebody else's name, your best friend. Mm -hmm. This girl, I like her. This man, I, I like him. But are they your legal spouse? 
Then you go ahead and include their name. Then what happens? They disqualify you. Just like that. When you are putting your names in the application form, your names should appear exactly as they appear on your passport. Okay? Name one, name two, name three should be exactly like your names on the paper and your names on the passport should be the same, should match in the right spellings. Everything. Okay? So just make sure if it's if you if your name is Anita Wanjiru Mugai, it should be Anita Wanjiru Mugai. You do not say Anita Mugai Wanjiru, and then it's the other way on your passport. No, it has too much. Uh, that point is clear. If you know for sure that you do not have a high school certificate, and you know for sure that you just dropped out of school, you do not have the two years of work experience that they so require. Please do not fail the forms. They won't get too far. You'll be disqualified because once you're announced a winner, right? And then they will ask you to share your certificate, you know, for high school. Or they will tell you, prove to us that indeed you have two years of work experience. And then you don't have any of those. So why waste time? Because if they choose you as a winner, it means someone else lost that spot. So don't be in it. Stay out of it so someone else can get the spot. All right? So only make the application if you know for sure that you have a high school certificate or you have two years of work experience. None of which, if you do not have, then do not make the application. Save some people time, okay? If it's their time to go to America for 2025, leave the spot for them. And then organize yourself and then you can travel next time. You're making the application and then you're looking at your sister. You're thinking, maybe I should add my sister's daughter or son. You're being generous. This is not your child, but then you add their names. You're going to be disqualified. So if the child is not yours, if their birth certificate does not read your name, do not add them on your do not add them on your application. Your application or your win huh, could be disqualified because of the picture that you use. There are specific specifications to the passport picture that you're supposed to use. You cannot take a passport picture of you smiling. Nobody wants to nobody wants you to be sad, but again, nobody expects you to smile. We're not playing a game. It's business. It's serious. And then they clearly tell you that the background of your picture should be white. Then you go and put some green. You love nature. They're telling you, listen, we need to see your ears. And then you go put on some wigs like your mama here. And then you cover your ears and you take your picture like this. They're telling you, listen, we have specifications that we need for your picture. That passport picture. We have rules and regulations that bind that picture. You don't follow them. You just make an assumption. You go there smiling. Or you show your teeth. We don't see your ears. You go put in a lot of makeup. That point is complete. Back to children. You're filling up the form. You're thinking, my ex-wife, she has the child. She was so rude. She was so rude to me. This woman, she can never be part of my life. And you had a child together. Then you're thinking, because she took the baby, she can as well keep that baby. Then this is what you do because you are smart. You do not include that child on your application. Okay. When they're doing the background search, you have one yes, but when they're doing the background search, they're going to figure it out. You have a child whom you did not list. It doesn't matter whether you're living with the, pa with the mother or not. The fact that that child is yours, you are obligated to add them on your application. Whether that child is going to travel with you to America or not, it does not matter. But the system requires that you add that child on your application form. Whatever you have going on with the mother is none of anybody's business. You ought to know that the application is free. When you're applying for the green card, you do not need to pay for anything. But of course, if you're one of those people who just want things easy, like, Mama, do it for me. Do it for me. Then I say, ah, go to the website, pay some $5. I'll make the application for you. Then it's going to cost you. But other than that, it should be very clear to you and others that the application is free. But when you win, when you are selected, of which you will be in Jesus' mighty name, inshallah, then you'll be expected to pay for the visa application fee. And that's it. That's it. Otherwise, if you can do this thing by yourself, because I'm going to show you step by step on how it can be done. And of course, the website will be shared in the description of this video and in the comment section of this video. So you'll have all the details. You can indeed make the application all by yourself. You do not need anyone to do it for you. But again, if you have the money, why suffer? If you don't have the time, use somebody else. I mean, really, let's look on the screen and see how we can make the application.
So my sons and daughters, you'll come to this website, dvprogram.state.go. And then this is what you see. Of course, they're asking for your names. So you have last family and then name, first name, middle name. Okay. Okay. So here you'll put your surname and then here you'll type in your first name. And then over here you'll do your middle name. And then after that, you need to do gender. Are you male or are you female? Okay. So you pick one. Date of birth starts with the month, day, and year. That's how America does the dates. Anything you're writing, any documents, whenever you're filling in forms, you'll have to get used to the idea of whenever you're doing dates, then you always start with the month, day, and then year. I know most of us, uh, especially from Kenya and other countries, most African countries, we usually start with the day and then the month and then the year. But for America, they always start with the month. It took me a minute to have that in my head. And then city where you were born, enter the city, wherever you were born, you know. If you are from Kenya, then you'd say Mombasa or Nairobi, depending on where you are coming from. And then country where you were born, which country, then you select, okay? Once you have selected the country, then they ask in country of eligibility for the degree program. Your country of eligibility will normally be the same as your country of birth. Your country of eligibility is not related to where you live. If you're born in a country that is not eligible for the DV program, please go to this link to see if there's another option available in your case. Then you say, they're asking, are you claiming eligibility based on the country where you were born? You'll say, of course, yes. But anyway, your case could be different. If it's different, then you say no. Then they're saying, if not, you must enter the country from which you are claiming eligibility. Then there's a drop down there and then you do that. Then the next part will be entrant photograph. So you need to put the first photograph here. Photographs must be submitted at the time of EDV entry. Photographs that do not comply with all specifications, including but not limited to recency of the photos, must be taken in the last six months. Composition of photos and unacceptable backgrounds are grounds for disqualification for the entire entry. So you will use one of the following methods to enter the image into EDV. Take a new digital image or use a digital scanner to scan a recent photograph. And then you put your photo there. This is now your own picture. The first photo is always yours. And then you have your mailing address. You put your details over there. And then once you've put on those details, there's at number nine, country where you live today. So you select where do you live. You could be living in Canada. You could be, on, you know, Canada is not eligible to apply. But if you're living in Canada, but you're originally from Uganda, then of course you say you live in Canada, but you're still eligible because you're from Uganda. Then you have your phone number. That is optional. You can add it if you want. But you can be sure that nobody is going to call you. Then there's the email address. You add your email address and then you confirm it. And then what is the highest level of education you have achieved as of today? And then you put all those details. What is your current marital status? Are you married or are you not married? Or are you divorced? Are you widowed or legally separated? Whatever applies for your case. And then you have to indicate the number of children. Then in the next page, which is next and last, you're going to have details of your dependents, starting from your husband or wife and children and their photographs and, and their passport numbers, all those details. And you put them in there. All right. So from here, you do continue. And then you go to the next page, which is just details of your dependents. And then once you're satisfied with what you have done, you hit submit. And so the whole application thing, when you're making an application, it should take you approximately 30 minutes and you're done with the application, okay? It is that simple. It doesn't take much. As long as you have all the details and requirements that you need and all the documents, like you have the facts that you need to add on your application, you should be fine. So if you have enjoyed this video or if you have learned anything from this video, then leave for me a heart in the comment section, okay? So if you have any question, anything you're not sure about, please. Feel free to comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And again, if you have not subscribed to this channel, then please consider subscribing to Accord TV because here, and this is where life is. Why? Because you normally do it here. And without forgetting, we're keeping it positive vibes only. And I'm so looking forward to seeing you all in the next one.